All right, hi year 12s, this is uh, Mr. Lim here again. This is the second video on empirical formula, and today we're gonna to be working out on, or focusing on um, molecular formula calculations. All right, so um, it's just working out the molecular formula from reaction data, and I am once again asking you to write down some notes. Um, so in your 11, you were just given the molar mass, or given the number of moles and mass to solve for the molar mass. Um, and then you need the molar mass and the empirical formula to work out the molecular formula. In year 12, you're going to have to do some extra calculations to get that, make you earn your, earn your keep. All right, so the different calculations for moles are vaporization and titration. Okay, so let's have a look. So first of all, we start with vaporization. So a certain mass of a sample is vaporized, which means it's turned to gas, and the pressure, volume, and temperature can determine the number of moles of gas present. Okay, so what does that mean? So here's a question. Determine the molar mass of a substance uh, if 1.63 grams of the substance is vaporized and found to have a pressure of 432.7 kilopascals when inside a 200 ml container at 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, make sure you convert this to liters, the volume into liters, and the temperature into Kelvin. Okay, so you're going to have them in liters and Kelvins, otherwise you're not going to be able to do this calculation right. Okay, so let's go start working on this empirical formula, or at least this molecular formula. So couple of things we remember to work out the molar mass of something you need to have remember uh, molar mass is of a big M in N is equal to little m of a big M so all you need to work out molar mass is M and N since we've got M already here all we need to work out is N okay so let's get started on that so first of all what information we've got we've got the pressure the volume and the temperature which means that we're probably going to be using the ideal gas law which is the PV is equal to NRT so let's work out the number of moles of this substance the number of moles of the sample will be equal to PV over RT okay so pressure is 432.7 the volume is going to be 0.2. As I said, we need to convert that into liters. So that's 0.2 liters. Okay, over RT, what's R? 8.314. And if you don't remember what that is, where can you find it? On your data sheet. And the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius, which is 473.15 Kelvin. So times 473.15. And you get a value. 0 0.0220 mole, which will get you A. Okay, so remember, all we need is the mass and the number of moles, and now we do have both of them, so we can work out the molar mass of the sample. Big M of the sample will be equal to M over N, because we can algebra, okay, which will be equal to 1.63 over A, okay, which will happen to be 74.09 grams per mole okay so 74.09 grams per mole and that's the molar mass of the substance okay with further information that's in the way so a which will be equal to 74.09 grams per mole okay so if the substance uh, has an empirical formula of C3H6O2 then determine the molecular formula of the substance. Okay, so we've got the C3H6O2. That means that the molar mass of the empirical formula, if I just add the 3 times 12, the 6 times 1, and the 2 times 16, that happens to be 74.08 grams per mole. How convenient that that is, happens to match the thing. Just remember that uh, the molecular formula is equal to the molar mass of the sample, which is over <coughs> that thing here is over here. The molar mass of the sample over the molar mass of the empirical formula, which happens to be uh, over here. Okay, that's over there. All right, times the empirical formula. So 74 and a bit over 74 and a bit times C3H6O2. 
right? That's effectively one. So therefore, the molecular formula is just the 3H6O2. Then they give you a little bit more data. So here, it does not undergo oxidation, all right? And it's found to have a pH less of seven. So the pH less than seven really gives it away as a carboxylic acid. And this just kind of confirms that it's a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid was C3H6O. It'd be something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that makes sense. Uh, that will be propanoic acid. Okay, let's try the next one. You have a go at this. This is 3.2 liters at SDP. So hopefully that you remember that N is equal to V over 22.71 at SDP. Okay. And then there's a little bit of data here. Um, uh, ooh, whoops. Uh, that's supposed to be a pitot change of greater than seven. Okay. This uh, with an N there indicates that it might probably an amine. All right. And that greater than seven will confirm that it's an amine. And so therefore you can work out the possible structure. Uh, the answer is actually C2H7N as the molecular formula and the empirical formula. So the empirical formula and molecular formula, this is the answer just for you to have a go yourself. Okay. Then we could deal with uh, titration to get your um, molar mass. Okay, so the sample is either acidic or basic and then is titrated against the sample of standardized acid and base to determine the number of moles of the substance. Okay, so let's have a look. A substance is basic with a single amine group. So the single amine group means that it will have one amine and accept one, accept one proton. Okay, because it accepts one proton, it just means it has a one-to-one -one ratio with the acid. Okay, so one-to-one -one ratio of the acid. So 0.74 grams of this substance is dissolved in a 250 ml valdimetric flask, then 20 ml aliquots of it require 18.76 ml of 0 0.07 mole per liter hydrochloric acid. Now, I always recommend drawing out these kinds of things. Okay, so let's go draw this concept out up here so that we don't lose any space. All right, so let's have a think. I've got 0.74 grams of my sample here, and it's an amine, but that's fine. All right, 0 0.5, 0 0.74 grams of my sample. Okay, what I do is that I drop that into a volumetric flask. Okay. It's 250 mils. And then I take it out of my volumetric flask. What do I take out? Aliquots of it of 20 mils. Okay. And then where do I put that? I put that into the conical flask. Above it, I have the burette. And inside the burette is 18.76. That's tighter. Mil of 0.07 mole per liter HCl. Okay, so which side do I start with? Do I start with the left or the right side? In terms of this calculation, I'm going to start from this side here and work my way that way. Okay, so let's get started. Let's work out first of all the number of moles of HCl, which will be equal to CV, which will be equal to 0 0.070 times 0 0.01876. Remember, You've got to measure that that's converted into liters, and that gets you 1.31 1, 1 times 10 to the negative 3 mole, which I'll call A. Okay, so that's the number of moles of HCl that I've got. That means I can work out now the number of moles of my sample. Just remember that that's in the titer in the aliquot. Okay, now that I have the sample of uh, stuff in my aliquot, uh, it'll be a one-to-one -one ratio because it has a single amine group. Okay, one-to-one -one ratio with the acid. That means it's equal to the number of moles of HCl, which will be equal to A. Okay, so now I've got my aliquot here. Now I've got to work out the number of moles of sample in my volumetric flask, because remember I'm working my way through that calc 
through that diagram moving from right to left. Okay, the number of moles in the sample of the volumetric flask will be equal to A times 250 over 20. Where do I get those values from? 250 mils total of the um, volumetric flask over the number of mils in the um, in the pipette. Okay, since the volumes change, the number of moles will change, uh, but the concentration will stay the same, and so therefore I have this calculation, and that happens to be how much? Where is it? Uh, 0 0.0164 moles. Okay. Once I've got that, and I've saved that as B, I'm going to be able to work out the number of moles uh, of molar mass of the sample, because now all of that was inside of that. So now I can just work out the big M of my sample, which was equal to, uh, what, B, no, 0.74 mass over B, which is the number of moles, which happens to be, uh, 45.08 grams per mole. Okay, 45.08 grams per mole. All right, that's the molar mass. It says down here that we know that the empirical formula is C2H7N. So let's work out the molar mass of our empirical formula. All right. That happens to be 45.086 grams per mole. And because they match, that makes it nice and easy. The molecular formula is equal to the big M of the sample over the big M of the empirical formula times the empirical formula, which happens to just make it 1 over 1 times the empirical formula, which means that it's C2H7N. Uh, and since it's a single amine group, okay, I should be able to draw that amine group, NH2C, C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Um, if you don't know what an amine group is, you can wait for the video, but generally it's a basic group that's on the end of that, and that's your amine group, and you'll learn about that more on later on, okay? So that's how you would work out the molar mass of a substance, okay, using uh, titration data. Here's another one for you to practice, okay. Um, I'll give you the answer. The molar mass of the sample is equal to, uh, where is it? Here, 104.05 mole per litre, no, grams per mole grams per mole, okay? And that means that this is the empirical formula and the molecular formula. All right, so you have a go at this one yourself. Um, see how you go, and if you have any questions, uh, let me know, and we'll work that through that um, in class. Adios.